While everyone's been busy launching Android handsets, LG's been a little late to the party. But late is better than not showing up at all, right? And with them, they've bought this, the InTouch Max GW620. Now, based on its low-end and pretty basic design, it's no surprise that it's running Android 1.5, which is comparatively ancient when compared to handset sporting 2.0 and above, like the Droid and the Google Nexus One. Even 1.6 is a far sight better. But LG have also put their mark on the handset too, but only if you want it. So, there's the option to choose between regular Android with the standard pull-out menu layout or LG's own interface, which adds extra shortcut icons and the menu button to the main screen based on LG's own S-Class UI, as well as a menu conveniently split into categories. There's also three home pages. For Android, it's the split home screen, which you swipe back and forth to access, whereas LG's home screen wraps around so you can continuously cycle through the three panes, mirroring a very basic version of the S-Class UI. Rather annoyingly, the customization doesn't remain the same, so you'll need to set these up separately. There's also a couple of nifty little on-screen switches in the notifications window shade to turn your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on and off. Though you'll still need to set up your connection separately for the first time. So design-wise, it looks a bit like a slim version of the Motorola Dex, but it feels like a much cheaper version as well. There is, however, a 3-inch resistive touchscreen on board, as well as a slide-out QWERTY keyboard. So when you take its slim frame into account, this is actually pretty good. And the keyboard on offer is a far sight better than the flat keys offered by the Droid. And that's because they're domed and therefore a lot easier to use. And it's actually a really comfortable keyboard to get to grips with. And a nice touch but minor addition to the handset is this dedicated music player key on the side. So if you're thinking about blasting your tunes on the bus or any kind of public transport, annoying everyone else around you, then think again as the speakers are pretty tinny. So to keep the phone's costs down, LG's had to sacrifice capacitive for a resistive. So needless to say, it's not going to be as responsive as, say, the Google Nexus One. But hey, at least you can use it with gloves. But I'm happy to report it is a decent touchscreen that is nice and responsive, unlike some resistive touchscreens like the 5800. Although, like most resistive touchscreens, this isn't without its flaws and does chip up on the odd occasion. Now, that screen itself isn't particularly striking, although, to be fair, I have been staring at a Google Nexus One for the past few days, so I am a little biased because it's exceptionally bright. But overall, the screen just isn't very striking. Now, a 5 megapixel camera sits at the back with an LED flash, although this also isn't without its flaws. During our tests, we experienced some serious shutter lag, but overall, images are sharp, reasonably decent, just not outstanding but adding a nice touch to the handset is the face tagging and face to action functions. Although expect a few bumps and hiccups before you get these features to work properly, but when they do, they're pretty cool. So face detection isn't always activated on all pictures, which is incredibly frustrating beyond belief. But when it does work, you simply tap on a photo and a box should appear around the face. You keep your finger pressed on the screen to pull up an options menu to assign a nickname or sync with someone in your contacts. Once a picture is connected to a contact, you simply tap on that person's photo and it will allow you to call them or share their contact details, which is pretty clever. And you can get your snaps online in a few taps too, if you're in the mood for sharing. And sticking well within that trend of aggregating all your social networks, Facebook, Bebo and Twitter are all baked into the handset in a handy social network manager application so you can update your profile, send messages, check your mate's status updates, upload pictures and all the other activity that comes with social networking, all from one location. This ties in nicely with LG's other service called Linkbook. It's a socially connected address book, essentially allowing you to add your friend's social network profiles to your main address book. You'll need to connect the accounts manually yourself first, as this isn't automatic. And then this will be denoted by a little F, T or B. But once it's done, you'll be able to access their profiles directly from your address book. And if you don't want to visit their home page, simply tap on the Log tab and have access to all the activity between you, such as calls and messages, as well as all the activity from their social network pages. And if you pledge allegiance to another social network, you'll just have to download the necessary application. So its other features include push email from a range of clients, including Hotmail, Gmail, and Yahoo. There's also Moxie Mail, which is Android's first email client, allowing you to connect with your Exchange email. There's also pretty decent web browsing on board, which looks really good on its three inch screen. Although needless to say, the fact that it's resistive prevents it from being an even better web experience. Now, as it's a smartphone, expect all the usual smartphone gubbins, so HSDPA, Bluetooth, and AGPS. So if you're in the market for an Android smartphone with a slide-out keyboard with great sharing functionality, LG's InTouch Max is easy to use with a reasonable price tag to boot. Not to mention, it will fit nice and easily into your pocket.